Hello and welcome to the video. This is actually the first in a brand new series where we're going to be putting iNav 2.1 inside a Bixler plane. Now the reason for this is that I've done actually lots and lots of iNav series. I was one of the first that got into iNav, started making videos on it, and I know the iNav developers pretty well. So a big shout out to people like Constantine who are in charge of the project. Now iNav is great. If you've never heard about iNav before, very briefly, it's a derivative of clean flight just like beta flight is but it's focused more on gps code and also support for fixed wings so if you're a quadcopter pilot then most people will probably go beta flight if you want fab gps options then you go for inav or if you're a fixed wing pilot then inav is a great choice as well inav understands fixed wing an awful lot more than some of the code that's out there so I'm going to pop it in this because 2.1 has just come out. There's some huge changes in iNav 2.1. I was going to do a video on iNav 2.0, but I like usually when there's a major change for a couple of bug fixes to come in. So 2.1 seems pretty solid now. And I'm also going to do it on a slightly different flight controller. This is actually the flight controller from Brain FPV. It's called the Radix. Now, for those of you that have watched the channel, you'll know that I've done builds as well with the Radix before, and I've put beta flight on them and put them inside fixed wings. The difference with the Radix over lots of other flight controllers is they have some special brain FPV goodness inside that means that it actually has a graphical vector-based on-screen display. So rather than that horrible, crappy, max chip-based thing with ASCII characters that we all have to live with, with the Brain FPV, you get a lovely, nice scrolling display. And for a fixed wing, that's actually going to be an awful lot nicer. So in this video series, what I'm going to do is go through this, and hopefully it'll help those subscribers and patrons who are really struggling to get iNav set up. I'm going to show every single step that I go through. So brace yourself. This isn't one of those that's going to be a quick 15-minute video and we're all done. I'm going to show every single step that I do putting it in the plane, how to wire it up, tips and tricks, the whole deal, so that you can follow along and get to the other end. The other reason I'm putting it in a Bixler is I tend to put iNav in wings. So Capiena 2, Texumo, we put it inside things like the ZOHD Orbit wing. I've got quite a few craft here that have iNav running inside. And for me, I've always had a really good experience with iNav, but I know an awful lot of other pilots haven't. So hopefully by sharing my process, it'll help those of you that don't know where you're going wrong to get iNav working well, to get it all working tickety-boo. So in this video, let me first of all start by sharing a couple of tips and tricks. There are some common mistakes that people will make with the Radix when they're setting up iNav, and then we'll flash iNav onto the board, and then we're ready for the next video in the series where we'll actually start the setup. So the first problem that people tend to come across with using the Radix with iNav is the firmware that you need is actually available from a different location. All the locations I'm showing here I'll put in the description so you can find them easily, but uh, Brain FPV take the code from people like Betaflight and iNav and then add their own proprietary OSD goodness into it and then release it on GitHub. So you need to download the hex file from these locations as well as the latest configurator from iNav. And again, I'll put all the links in the description so you can find this stuff. Once you've got iNav onto the flight controller, the setup is exactly the same with one small difference. Brain FPV have also changed the target a little bit for this to maximize the number of PWM outputs that you can get to support things like Bixlow without having any crazy wiring looms. So again, we'll come on to that in the second video, but that's some quite cool stuff that they've done there too. Third thing to comment on is the Brain FPV manual. Uh, it's an award-winning manual and it's easy to see why. It's written with first-time builds in mind. I'm going to be referring to the manual as we go through all this, but it shows where you connect your SBUS receiver, where you connect your GPS module, how you wire up the power, where you connect your camera and VTX to, and where all the power comes from. So by following along with this, hopefully you'll get to the other end and it'll all work nicely. I'm going to be using something called the Wing Power Board, or WPB. Uh, this Wing Power Board it just plugs into the Radix, makes a really cute stack. Again, it has enough outputs to run something like the Bixler on it. 
Uh, it will manage the current and all that goodness as well as provide filtered voltages and 5 volts for all the FPV kit as well. Now the Radix stuff actually has several different power distribution boards. I've had most of them here. There's a, a Hobbywing 4-in-1 ESC that you can plug it into that I did in that build. And there's also other ones as well. There's a standard distribution power board as well as the wing one. If you're going to put a fixed wing together, it's the uh, wing PB or the WPB that you need that's going to do all the connections for you without too much trouble. We'll talk about power setup later on, but just a top tip, you can provide the 5 volts for the servos by soldering a little solder pad on the back of the board. Personally, I wouldn't do it that way. The ESC that's in your plane already probably has more than enough current capacity for all of the servos, so I would just let that continue to do it. But again, we'll cover that in a future video. Last couple of tips when you're putting this thing together. Be wary of vibration. The flight controller comes with anti-vibration mounts. Make sure you don't crush those when you put everything in. And if you're building an INAV wing for the first time and you haven't done it and you're a quadcopter person, just make sure you do things like balance the props. I know a lot of pilots in the multi-rotor world don't bother with that, but in fixed wing, it's a far more important thing to do. A lot of excessive vibration on the craft is bad. It will be read by the IMU and gyros as potentially movement, and that will mean that you'll get all kind of wacky stuff happening. So with all of that said as gotchas, let me jump on the computer. Let me just show you how I'm going to flash this thing with iNav using the custom code from the Brain FPV website. So here we are in iNav version 2.14, just plugged the board in and it's saying at the top that the firmware variant isn't supported. It looks like it probably isn't iNav on here. I bet it's probably shipped with beta flight. So we need to go and flash the firmware. Now we've downloaded the firmware, so that is on the machine. If you go in to choose a board, now iNav has its own Radix variant, but you don't want to use that. So if you're searching on this list, you'll search up and down for a very long time trying to find the Radix on here. And if you do find it, you don't use that one anyway. And that's because, again, the Brain FPV people take the iNav releases from the iNav team and then add their on screen display goodness. So, because of that, what we're going to have to do is load the custom firmware by going to the bottom and clicking Load Firmware Local. We're going to go to the place that we downloaded the hex file from the Brain FPV website and click Flash Firmware. Now I would always recommend selecting full chip arrays just to make sure that all of the code is off the board and you're going to get a very clean iNav installation. Now this unfortunately isn't working so we're going to have to load Zadig. Again I'll put a link here to my Zadig video that shows you how to use it. I'm going to replace the driver because the flight controller is rebooted into STM32 bootloader mode. There isn't a USB driver associated with that so I'm going to have to put that in place. So once we've done that, I'm going to have to unplug the board again and then re-plug the board back in. And when I do that, the COM port appears, but we don't want the COM port. So I'm going to say uh, flash the firmware and that will then reboot the board into DFU mode. And you'll see at the top it now says DFU and the flashing will start. First of all, it will raise the board and then it will start uploading the code. Now, just a word of caution, I'm recording this at the start of the process. I'm probably going to end up reflashing the board with a later version. The guys at Brain FPV go usually go through a couple of release candidates before they have their final version. This is their first attempt at INAV 2.1 on the Radix flight controller. So I'm expecting there might be one or two changes. So as we go through this series, I might reflash the board later on, but it's going to be good enough for us to show you how to do the setup. Now the last thing I'll show you here, if we connect and move the board around, there we are, it's all working, fantastic. If we go down to CLI and type in version, then there we are, well, it's an iNav Radix version 2.1.0. So we come back out and it'll reboot and reconnect, we can have a quick look around. Now again, the process I'm going to go through is very similar to my other iNav series, so we are going to calibrate the accelerometer in the next video and go through all those bits and bobs. But the thing I want to show you 
is the mixer. Now the mixer is something that we've looked at a couple of videos. I'm going to select airplane, I'm going to select a standard airplane and I'm going to click then save and reboot. And let me show you something that's a little bit unusual uh, when you select the airplane on the Radix flight controller. Now the way it normally works with the mixer in a iNav wing is outputs one and two are dedicated for the motors and then the servos are on outputs three, four and five. But if you remember that view of the wing power distribution board or the wing PB from Brain FPV, there's only four outputs. So that would mean the first two would be dedicated for motors. The other two would be available for something like a wing for maybe just two servos. They've done something quite clever in here and hopefully you can see it in the output mapping. S1, output 1 is for motor 1, which is what we're going to need for the motor on the Bixler, and outputs 2, 3, 4, and 5 are actually the next servos, which all link up to the outputs here in the servo mixer. So, even though I only have 4 outputs, I should be able to get everything to work here. I don't need to stabilize rolls that we're going to use a Y cable and I'll change that in this mixer in the next video. So there we are we have the Radix flashed with iNav 2.1 so join me in the next video where we'll continue the setup and start to look at the wiring and the pieces that we're going to put in this Bixel of plane. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction 2, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.